The fundamental question that I've wondered about and want to know is how good is this card or suitable is this card for retro computing applications? Having a VGA connector, having a USB serial connection, and having a PS2 keyboard connector all on the same side of the card are really optimal physically for what you want for a retro computer. But uh, one thing I'd really like to have, because some of the retro computer designs, particularly Grant Searle's Z80 retro computer design, is designed to use an SD card. So I really need at least four output pins or input output pins. And the question is, does this card have them? Well, let's take a look. The VGA connector here uh, has driven by H-Sync, V-Sync, red, green, and blue. And when we look, those are each driven by chains of resistors. So for blue, there's one, two, three, four, five resistors. For green, there is six resistor sets, or six bits. And for red, there's five also. So that gives you the 16 bits with one extra bit on the green. Um, sounds good. I mean, that's more than I need for retro computing. For retro computing, it would be more than fine to have have six bits, uh, two bits of red, green, and blue. But here's the question: What does that do to the I/O pin connector, the connector that's on the card, the 26-pin edge connector? Well, let's take a look. They give the pin out here on the schematic for that connector, and um, it's not good news for connecting external hardware, as I think. Some people that have looked at it have also found, and I found that after I ordered the card. Uh, if you look here, it's got power and ground, which is fine. It's got the PS2 for the keyboard, which um, if you're hooking up a keyboard, it's, those are just pins you can't use. Same thing with horizontal sync and with vertical sync. And all of the VB, VG, VR lines are hooked up for the VGA. So basically the video display DAC uh, resistor network DAC uh, pins are all brought out to that I.O. connector so there's nothing left on the I.O. connector powering ground on the other end there are literally no spare pins if you use the PS2 and you use the VGA as it stands um, what could be done for this card to make it suitable let's take a look the way these resistor resistor uh, networks work is that a smaller resistance drives the screen more and a larger resistance drives it less. So they have the same package here and they just hook them up in series parallel sort of combinations to get different resistances for sort of a two R to R ladder with each step being twice as much resistance. So there's 500 ohms on the most significant bit of the red, 1K on the next, 2K, 4K, and 8K. And you can imagine that an 8K resistor wouldn't drive a bit on the screen nearly as much as a half a K resistor. To get reclaim some bits, uh, it would be necessary to remove these R packs off the card. And these are little eight pin parts. Might be a little bit challenging to get them off. Physically, they look like they could be removed, and that could free up pins for an external SD card. And for retro computing, that would be perfectly fine to have only two or so bits. So if we reclaimed uh, v one of the bits out of uh, the red, and for green, if we re uh, reclaimed two bits, maybe these two bottom bits, and for blue, if we took off the bottom R pack, we could reclaim the bottom channel. That would be all four bits that we would need for an SD card, but it would require removing four little eight pin parts off of the card. Um, Actually, they look on this card, they may not be R packs. I'll have to look a little closer. No, they are um, a single part, so it's um, more difficult to desolder something like that. Um, could be done. Maybe something chip quick or some other way to heat all the pins at once. I'd be afraid to take a hot air gun to it uh, or an SMD rework station just for fear of melting everything in the whole area. But the area is pretty nicely isolated. Uh, let's let's take a look in the picture of it and see what it looks like physically to see how hard it would be to do that. Here's the resistors on the right hand side of the screen. So for instance, the red is made out of RPAC1, RP2, and RP3. So removing RP3 would, remo would mean removing this single part over here on the right 
for the green to remove the bottom two bits would be to remove RP6 and RP15. So that would be these two packs right here, which would be possible again if it's um, possible to desolder them without causing much damage uh, to the card. Hopefully it would be. And the blue would remove me be removing RP9. Um, in that case, we'd collect back the four extra bits that we need to hook up an external SD card. So this seems doable. Um, it would be nicer to have had less bits for this project. And uh, boy, I certainly could have sacrificed quite a few of the other things on this card. I definitely don't need the LED, seven segment LED display, and there's a, quite a bit of resources allocated to that. That might be another potential place to harvest, but the problem is these are physically wired up to the VGA pins themselves, so there's really no happy way to get there. The, the sort of strange part is it's a little hard to see in the traces here because it looks like these R packs are all coming off of, of this side of the part, and it looks like these IOs are coming off of here but I don't think that's the case. I think they must connect around, at least if the, the pin numbers are accurate there because that is what the schematic shows. And you can physically see it here. The, the traces do come into this side of the part, but these traces are all picked up off vias through here. So it looks like they're dropping down below and looking at the back side of the part, I can see that they come through and drop down under the part and come back out this side. I mean, it takes a lot of pins to do the SD RAM and the other things on the card, but I really, I really think it could have been better for retro computing, and it probably would be a slam dunk for a lot of people that have done Grant's retro computing project. It probably would be a very, very close fit. Plus, it's about twice the capacity of the FPGA that Grant used for his kit, so you could do a little more things with it, which would be kind of nice. I'm not quite sure why they have so many VGA bits. Um, I guess they just figured it was cool to do it, and they could, but um, not really the best choice for what I want to do. The seven segment display uses these three R packs, R pack 10, 11, and 12, and you can see them here on the schematic. That might be another way to pick off some of the lines. I think they might be, well, I don't know if they're shared with anything else or not, or if they just go to the display. But boy, that's a, a heck of a lot of resource that I could get good use out of. Uh, that would really possibly be as simple as just pulling one R pack and attaching four wires. It's not nearly as convenient as being connectorized, but it could be done. Uh, that might be one way to get there. It's uh, certainly more physically convenient to have this I.O. connector be the place that external things are hooked up through. It would be a little bit of a pain to remove a couple of the lines here, maybe the four that we're talking or I'm talking about, um, and that would scatter the pins across the connector, but it would be a clean solution with easy connections out. It seems like these cards are made more for demonstration purposes rather than built to the purpose of doing retro computing. Um, even for retro computing, it would be nice to have a D to A and not an A to D. It wasn't quite so much something that somebody would have had in a retro computer age, but they certainly would like to make some sounds out of a retro computer, or possibly could. The buzzer gives you some sound. Um, incidentally, the buzzers, if you think of it more like a speaker, you have to drive it with uh, pulse train, uh, PWM signal, or some kind of a square wave to be able to get sound out of it. It's not something that if you just put a voltage on it, it makes a sound. A couple of the Grant Searle designs the 6502 base design and the 6809 base design have BASIC, the programming language BASIC, and they can run at a pretty decent clip off the RAM inside of the Altera. And you can get 16K of RAM in the Altera as well as this, in this example, get VGA out. So uh, built up one earlier that had uh, VGA output PS2 keyboard input, a serial port, and 16K of RAM in it. And that would be very comparable to maybe a, a Radio Shack Tandy color computer or something in the early 80s, late 70s kind of time frame. Uh, 
certainly this this board is more than capable of, of meeting that kind of a challenge and with the SD RAM and controller inside of the FPGA uh, could have quite a bit more RAM in fact it could easily be paged to have a, a ton of RAM uh, it's just the SD card storage that's the only sticking point for me at this point and even that looks looks doable but just not tr trivially doable hey listen if anybody out there has a better idea on how to do what I want to do with this card I'm sure welcome to here I don't see any other points on here I'd see the three voltage test points but there really aren't a lot of other access points I'm leaning towards the video side just because of the connectivity but it would be awfully easy to tack four wires up here and hook something up it would just be a little bit sloppy and I don't like mechanically sloppy things because they end up being problematic but a ribbon cable attached to there with a connector on the end of it certainly would be doable it could be made to be physically solid and the back side of the card really has nothing on it so it would be pretty easy to find a spot to mount an SD card onto. Uh, might have to be put off on foam tape or something to keep it away from uh, from the pins because there are pins from things all the way around the card, one of them being the display. I think if this card didn't have the seven segment display and maybe put the LEDs down at the bottom and up here top put a micro SD or an SD card slot, I think this would be really a perfect or seemingly perfect card for retro computing. I think it would hit a lot of targets. So I'm hoping the guys from ZR Tech or um, whoever the design agent is for this product, uh, WXEDA it says up here. Not quite sure who that is. I did some Google searching and found some results for that. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they'll be listening to this video and, and thinking about that particular application. I think there is a market for it. It may be a nostalgia market of people wanting to rebuild the computer that they had and that they probably tossed out in a dumpster 10 or 15 years ago like I know I did with my first computer. Uh, hopefully somebody will uh, reach into that market. I know there's a lot of other products out there that are more high-end and targeted towards um, higher-end CPUs, but down here in the 8-bit range, um, 6502, 6809, uh, Z80, that sort of family, this FPGA is certainly more than capable. It, it, has about twice as many logic elements inside of it. It just doesn't have enough RAM to fill out the 64K of RAM space that is possible. And 16K is probably fine for a lot of things and the SD RAM probably with some finagling and some help from um, some people that have sent me some information and on the information I found on the internet as well. Probably the same guy. Uh, Hopefully there's enough information to get this whole function working and, and seamless as if it was SRAM, but, it, but it's a hassle. It's not just hook up an SRAM and click a button. Um, we'll keep you up on where we're going. I'm, I'm going to start to play around with some more of the functions of the card and probably throw down the FPGA uh, Grant Searles 6809 base design in here and see how easily that comes up. I, th I think with the pin maps that I've got now, and uh, schematic that there's plenty of information. It should just be a matter of recompiling it and doing it. Thanks for watching. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products, and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.